Hi everyone, my name is Winston Cam. I'm here to present my project um, at the Source Intersection Fair on my art exhibition on the Protestant Reformation and interior church architecture under the guidance of Professor Scallon um, with the Department of Art History and Art at Case Western Reserve University. Um, for our Art History 360 class, we had um, began this project and I decided to repurpose it and go a little further and dive into more exhibition design work. So this combines both curatorial work, so picking out um, specific artworks to convey the story of the Protestant Reformation and how it plays into um, this changing culture of church and, and religious space design. Um, and so with this curatorial work, I, I've you know, taken, uh, taken in exhibition design as well, actually fitting um, a space with these artworks that I've picked out um, to tell a story. Now, I have chosen my site can zoom in here to be the Cleveland Museum of Art. <laughs> um, and so at the lower floor of the of CMA is a reserve for special exhibitions. Um, so the entrance, uh, the front entrance of CMA is somewhere located on the, the top left here and you walk your way towards the left through, through the atrium, you'll see the escalators. And so if you go down the escalators, um, this is where the special exhibition space is usually located. So to quickly outline um, some of the rooms that I have sectioned off, you've got Martin Luther, so the, the man himself, who was the catalyst for the Protestant Reformation, nailing his 95 theses to the Wittenberg Church, um, outlining his grievances with the uh, Catholic Church. Then we go into the pre-Reformation altarpieces. So altarpieces were really big um, religious iconography um, I mean, throughout much of history at this point, um, when it comes to uh, Europe and Christianity. Um, and so really showing the transition between these really ornate, um, overt religious objects um, being being painted and depicted, and then how how this or how this and uh, the future of, of the Protestant Reformation may change that. So this is kind of like a, a preamble to, to many of those um, artworks. And then you, you've got a room here um, towards the back dedicated to this polychrome assemblage sculpture called Angelic Salutation by Viet Stas. Um, a lot of these artworks are within the 16th century, mid 16th century to early 16th century. Um, so this is a polychromed lime wood assemblage. Um, you've got the Annunciation scene with Gabriel and Mary um, with a, the circle crown, polychrome crown around it um, with, with some tokens of the some scenes from Passion of Christ. And so I, I have some chairs here scattered about hoping that um, it would give viewers some you know, space to sit, but also look at the sculpture from the, the same viewing height and angle as um, churchgoers would in the St. Lorenz Cathedral in Nuremberg. So as you walk through this angelic salutation room, you, you enter and cross the Torgau Castle Chapel replication that I've created, mock-up of some sort. So, um, here we see a top-down view, um, very sparse of religious iconography. There isn't much um, overt religious imagery that is within this church space because it was the first Lutheran-built church. It was consecrated by Martin Luther himself in 1544. Um, and a lot of the architectural elements are by the famous uh, artist Lucas Cronach. Um, most notably, the only um, really religious um, art within the space is the pulpit. So this side hung wall, this wall hung side pulpit, I should say, um, is where the preacher would, would stand and preach. He isn't centrally located because you know, the focus is on one's personal attainment and connection with God, as opposed to um, an individual or preacher preaching to, to the masses. So the side located kind of, the side located preacher um, in a way detracts from that idea. So there are, um, elements of uh, Protestant doctrine, such as, um, like I mentioned before, personal relationship to God. There are um, different scenes from Jesus' life that really um, convey that idea along the sort of the, the sides of the pulpit, which is really interesting to know. Other than that, the entire interior of the church is very sparse, very, very sparse. Um, something important to note that um, this church is actually three stories high, but CMA, this being an underground space, um, I didn't really feel a need to design the whole three stories because it really wouldn't fit. Um, in addition, um, I missed out on capping the top of this three-story um, interior church with revolted ceilings. Um, 
So I put the ceiling in a separate space itself. And I really wanted to showcase in this space, the science and engineering behind why revolted ceilings are so um, popular during this time. So moving away from Romanesque church design, we've got a revolted ceilings um, of Gothic cathedral styles. Um, and so in this space, I, I wanted to, to really show um, and teach kids and, and also people who um, older individuals who are interested in the engineering and statics of, of um, church design, why this ceiling type was so successful um, and how it bears all the loads. And so that's a little further uh, down here, you can see after visiting the church, but there's also a room back here dedicated towards iconoclasm through woodcuts and engravings. So a big part of the result of the Protestant Reformation was iconoclasm. So really radical Lutherans and Calvinists um, were deemed iconoclasts because they would destroy church, um, public church artworks um, as a rebellious kind of um, act against people who um, didn't really believe in the same things they believed in, in terms of um, being really um, onerous to uh, having a very modest sort of depiction of religion. Um, and so in this space here, um, sparse, very sparse as well, but you've got some woodcuts by Lucas Cronick himself, Hans Boldung, um, and, and Jan Lucan, many others. <clears throat> in this space, um, shortly after you walk backwards, go into the revolted ceiling room, um, you enter the Brussels Cathedral stained glass window. So Brussels was predominantly um, ruled under the Spanish heavily influenced Catholic empire. Um, so much of their churches and cathedrals in Brussels are very um, decked out with a lot of uh, religious imagery. And we can see here, um, actually, the, the cross axis of the church walkway I've, I've indicated is on par with the cardinal direction of north-south running there. And it's important because um, the stained glass um, windows in the church itself is, is, on, is on the same axis as north and south. So you've got the north transept stained glass here and the south transept. Transepts are essentially um, the side rooms of a, um, of a church that might have multiple sort of uh, rows and columns um, spanning the longitudinal direction. And we can see the stained glass window views here. Very, very large, um, very, very large compared to the size of a human being, although these would be elevated um, much higher. And lastly, I just wanted to indicate um, the space here. You've got uh, many uh, human figures on columns. So these would be the 12 apostles <laughs> in this uh, cathedral space. So all in all, um, I've indicated some notable select artworks of this exhibition off to the right here in my references, but through this analysis of visual elements within the Brussels Cathedral and also the Torgau Castle Chapel, a lot of conclusions can be drawn about the initial religious impetus to explain how some Northern Europeans conceived their religious spaces to accommodate a changing belief system. Um, so in addition, um, some other objects and artworks I've picked out um, can further illustrate how the Protestant Reformation's effect um, affected Northern European Renaissance art. So in the end, this is my exhibition. I can't really explain all the artworks and how they tie into it because I mean, at the end of the day, this is an art exhibition. It's for the viewer itself to experience it all and draw conclusions on themselves and do research and have a, a good understanding of art history going into it, but also learn a lot. Um, and so that is my project for source. Thank you.